Guys, welcome back to the off grid garage here in sunny winter Australia. You have seen the weather. This is how it's supposed to be. A little bit of clouding there. And that's all we get <laughs> for today. Yeah, guys, welcome back. It is so good to see you here on the channel again. Uh, don't look at my nose. Um, and we had a mosquito inside the house. You won't believe it. In winter time, goes into the house and yeah, bites me in the nose. So I didn't drink last night, at least not too much. So it is really the mossy thing and it, it is itchy. So if I... <laughs> yeah, so don't uh, look at my nose here. Eye contact. Guys, eye contact, right? Well, guys, in today's video, we want to do the continuous test, the continuity... I learned it. I, the continuity test from all our solar panels on top of the off-grid garage down to our main earth bar. And we basically need to test all the equipment on the roof and, well, usually all the equipment we have, what is the resistance of all our equipment to the earth bar? And you can buy one of these continuity testers online for around $120 or something. I'll link one of them down below. They come with all kinds of test equipment and cables and clamps. And or we are going to use the internal resistance tester today because this measures very well in the low resistance area. And this is what we are going to measure today. At least I hope so. I just hope we don't have any high resistance here from our solar panels down to the main earth bar here. So here's our internal resistance tester, which we usually use for batteries. And what we're going to do is we're using one probe against the main earth bar and take the other probe against a metal object we want to measure. For example, here this um, back wall is from aluminium. And uh, if you would just... So one against the main earth bar and the other one against the back panel here. And we have a resistance of two milliohms. So this measures from here to the earth cable, through the earth cable, back to the main earth bar here. And this is two milliohms of resistance. So the regulations here say we cannot have more than 0.5 ohms from any device in our solar system down to the main earth bar. So 500 milliohms is the limit. And this one was only two milliohms, so we are totally fine. So, and then you keep measuring from here to your inverter, for example. Take one of these screws and we have a um, resistance of 30 milliohms here from the inverter to our main earth bar, totally within the limit. Yeah, and you can, you can measure from your main earth bar to the metal structure of the garage here, for example. This is one milliohm only. And then you keep continuing measuring. But you can already see we need to extend this test cable. But um, by doing this, we obviously increase the resistance already because the extension cable you use has already a certain resistance. And we need to go on top of the roof here and all the way to the furthest away panel. So this is quite probably um, 15, 20 meters or so. So we need a 20 meter cable, connect this test lead to our main earth bar down here and take the other one with us and connect it to the tester and then to our equipment on the roof. So I'm using this uh, 20 meter long um, thin cable here. Unfortunately, we already have 1.8 ohms now with the cable and the clamps I need to put on the probes here to have my hands free to actually measure. So we cannot have more than 2.3 ohms on the display here, then we would have a fail. And unfortunately, I cannot reset this one here to zero now with this cable connected. And hence they made these testers, of course, because then you can just press the zero button. Everything is zeroed out and you have your exact test result on the display then and don't need to do the maths all the time. But here we have already 1.8 ohms now. Yeah, I've just uh, tried the Unity device here and it shows us 1.6 ohms. And I can actually press the zero button here and then it will go to zero. But, um, well, 0.5 is our threshold. So I'm not quite sure how exact this still measures here in the low area of the scale. So I would rather take this one here. It gives us a bit more resolution on the display. That's why they make these testers, right? <laughs> okay, I've now connected our test cable here to the main earth bar. And, um, well, this is the 20 meters we have across the driveway. 
let's do a final calibration here if i connect this one back to the main earth bar we have 0.75 okay so if you now go around here and measure on different metal objects here of our installation for example the front panel here this is still 1.77 or here the one of the screws on the inverter 1.77 this back panel here I'm not sure I got the contact is 1.77 it is still good um, Let's take one of these random screws here, 1.76, and it's still good, right? So and this is basically how you do it. You will walk around and then you measure um, all your metal objects in your installation against the main earth bar. And if your resistance stays under 2.3 ohms in this case here, we are totally fine. So let's get on the roof and do some testing. Ah, I want to show you something before we go. You remember the last video when I talked about the anodized aluminium frames of the solar panels and rail systems here? Well, if we measure the resistance of this frame, for example, here, um, here, if I touch both, you can see it, it's non-conductive. This is all totally isolated. The anodized layer on top of the aluminium isolating. So the only... The only real point where you can measure a solar panel is at its corners here, where the aluminium profile is cut together in a 45 degree angle. And this is where you can actually measure where you have contact to the actual aluminium frame. Um, show you this here quickly. Yeah, there we go. Zero ohms, because, well, they are close together here, right? But this is where you have contact to the actual aluminium frame, not here on the metal. So putting solar panels on top of your rail system, on top of your garage, this, this is not a ground method. It will not work. This is all isolated material. That's, that's why you have these washers to pierce through this anodized layer into the aluminium and then make good contact. And the same with the earth clamp or the, the um, ground lug clamp with the two spikes. It really pierces through this layer into the rail system of your solar system and then gives good contact to the ground cable. So we are now on top of the roof. This is our cable going down to our earth bar. And we've got the internal resistance tester here. So for example, if we measure here the metal roof of the carport, you will see a resistance 1.77 so that's pretty good so this is all earthed and then when you measure your solar panels up here on the roof you go like this and you got no connection at all nothing see or here your your rail system from the side nothing even if you wiggle this one around there will be nothing so you really want to make sure you actually measure where you have cut the aluminium and you have access to the pure metal and now we can see a reading of 1.77 as well so this is very very good uh, earthing or grounding and here if we measure here at the corner of the solar panel we still have nothing because the solar panel has no contact to the actual rail system. Let's put some of these ground washers underneath and see what the difference is. And let's do another reading. So before there was nothing and now I'm measuring again here on the corner. We have got access and we have a reading one point something hang on 1.8 1.9 so that's totally fine still but we've got only one washer underneath so far so if i repeat this if i repeat this for all four corners now we will see the um, actual resistance going down then because we've got better contact and yeah you can hardly see you can hardly see the water underneath there it's a tiny gap there now 
So I guess all these panels here, they are not really grounded because they've got no contact to the actual rail system at the moment. Unless one of the clamps has scratched on the frame here and makes good contact. And that's why you need these earth washers underneath. Yeah, and then you, you have this um, very simple drawing here of your roof and you, and you basically put all the numbers in this drawing and this goes to your documentation with your solar system then. So if there is an inspection or any maintenance coming up, um, people can actually see what the resistance of your solar panels were at the point of installation then. Well, I guess this is all part of the process, right? Do another measurement here on this side, on this corner. Let's see what we get. 1.76. That's perfect. That's basically the same as our roof and everything else. So there's no difference. Well, and to put these earth washers underneath your panels, it, it took only a minute or so with the battery drill, you know. So if you haven't got them under your panels, I link these washers down below. You can buy them pretty much on eBay, AliExpress and Amazon everywhere. They're not, they're not super cheap as you would expect, but as you have seen, without these washers, your solar panels are basically not grounded. So you definitely want these washers underneath. Um, this is one of the isolated extensions I have put in here, this fiber class material. So um, this actually isolates our rail system from the roof. And I always wanted to measure if these feet actually have contact to the metal roof here, because they have this rubber ceiling, this rubber square underneath. And also the actual screws have a rubber, like a washer underneath here. So it looks like to me, this screw here going into the metal roof has no contact to the aluminum. So let's measure the aluminum first. And for sure, we have no contact with this mount to the metal roof. If I measure the screw directly, yeah, the screw, yeah, the screw has 1.7 something again because it, yeah, it is screwed into the metal structure of the roof, but rubber washer and a rubber ceiling under the mount here to prevent moisture from going in. So even if I replace them all with aluminium extensions, it wouldn't make a difference because this is not a grounding in terms of electrical grounding. There's no connection from the actual mount to the roof because of all this rubber stuff in there. So you definitely need your ground or earth cable connected to your rail system and then the washers underneath your panels to make this all work. Okay guys, I guess so far this video from today, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. I certainly learned something myself because I have not done this before. And we have now done the continuity test <laughs> with our internal resistance meter here and everything works fine when we put the washers underneath and we measure on the corners of these panels where the aluminium is cut. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all your generous donations to all these beautiful and wonderful people who donated, helping me out making these videos here from on top of the garage. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, I would say until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.